ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we're gonna go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison analysis of the Last Hope sidearm versus the Vision sidearm, and find out which one of these two blue monstrosities is truly the best among the two. As far as the Last Hope goes, I have no doubt that many of you know exactly what this weapon is, as it's been here since the launch of Destiny 2, and has been a complete powerhouse, decimating every single Guardian in its path, especially for that of PvP, including that of Trials, and of course, Competitive. For many of you, the Last Hope has been your go-to primary meta weapon, and that's because it truly just demolishes Guardians on a very regular basis. However, there may be a new opponent in town to possibly take its place, and that thing is called the Vision. The reason why we're just hearing about the Vision now is because, of course, Future War Cult has just won this past faction rally, and that's how all of us were able to obtain this thing for either a thousand glimmer or fifty thousand glimmer, depending on whether or not you actually pledge to the faction. Regardless, the reason why we're doing this video is because I've been hearing a lot of chitter chatter from this person and that person, especially among you guys in the community, that the Last Hope is still better or that the Vision is the new king. And so, what I really wanted to do is I just wanted to break it down for you guys via statistical analysis, and that includes the weapon's base stats, the weapon's PvP stats, the weapon's perks, and how those perks are then going to play into the weapon's playstyle. And lastly, discuss each weapon's shot rhythm, as that one thing alone can really dictate as to how effective and how efficient that each one these weapons is and the range engagements in which they are most beneficial in. With all these pros and cons, the only thing left to do is to eviscerate that subscribe button and let's jump right into video. The very first thing that I want to discuss is each one of these weapons base PvP stats. And so what this includes is the weapon's optimal headshot time to kill, as well as the weapon's body shot time to kill, and then averaging these two things together so that you guys get a really good solid understanding as to how viable that these things are, at least in that first initial engagement, every single time. This is very, very important to understand a weapon's consistency, and so what you gotta also understand about each one of these weapons is that they are actually in the exact same archetype. What this implies is that they're going to do the exact same damage output for both headshots and body shots, and so regardless of whether or not you're using the Last Hope or that of the Vision, each one of these weapons is either going to do 26 points of damage in the head or 20 points of damage in the body. Looking solely at the weapon's optimal headshot time to kill, it's going to take exactly 7 critical headshots and 1 body shot to obtain the weapon's optimal TTK at 0.85 seconds. Yes, my friends, you heard me right, I said 0.85 seconds, which is absolutely phenomenal and spectacular, which is only going to require 2 and 2 thirds of a burst to actually obtain this overall TTK. Analyzing the weapon's body shot time to kill, it's going to take exactly 10 body shots to achieve an overall body shot TTK at 1.1 seconds. By averaging these two things together at 0.85 and 1.1 and divided by 2, the overall average time to kill is at 0.98 seconds. And this is such a phenomenal overall TTK because it doesn't matter whether or not you're getting headshots or body shots because in most cases, you're still going to get that overall average which is less than one second and you're gonna have this on that very first initial kill every single time. Now where things get a little bit interesting is when we understand each of the weapon's very first unique and intrinsic perk. And as you guys can see right there on the screen, the Vision has Kill Clip whereas the Last Hope has Zen Moment. Kill Clip states that reloading after a kill grants increased damage output, whereas Zen Moment states that causing damage with this weapon is going to increase the weapon's stability. As far as Zen Moment goes, we're going to get into that in just a little bit, but what we gotta understand about Kill Clip is the damage output associated with it after you get that first initial kill. As soon as you guys happen to get a Kill Clip to proc, the weapon's then going to do 34 points of damage in the head and then 26 points of damage in the body. Now, if we were to then go ahead and associate each one of these two things with an optimal headshot and body shot time to kill respectively, the optimal headshot time to kill on the Vision is at 0.61 seconds, and it's going to take precisely 6 critical headshots to achieve this. Looking at body shots and body shots only, it's only going to take 8 body shots, and then that's then going to associate to a 0.85 body shot TTK. Averaging these two values together by taking 0.61 and 0.85 and divided by 2, the overall average time to kill on this weapon is 0.73 seconds when Kill Clip is active. 
My friends, that one value is so unbelievably powerful and glorious and spectacular in so many ways that there are very, very few weapons in this game that can get that TTK. And the fact that this thing has an overall average time to kill at 0.73 seconds when kill clip is active is truly astounding and one of the things that baffles my mind as to why Bungie would even do this, but nevertheless, that's why this thing is such a powerhouse, especially in those 1v2 engagements. With this, you guys can clearly understand that the Vision has a very drastic and powerful difference here in comparison to that of the Last Hope, and that's just because the weapon's lethality is 10 times more potent on that of the Vision in comparison to the Last Hope because of Kill Clip and Kill Clip alone. What Kill Clip is really going to come in handy for is those 1v2 and 1v3 engagements, but just keep in mind that in those 1v1 engagements where that first kill is only being procced and you're not going to proc Kill Clip, then both the Last Hope and the Vision had that same lethality, and so in this respect, they're quite equal. Understanding this, the very next thing that I really want you guys to understand and grasp is the weapon's base stats. And so as you guys can see right there, here's a nice little chart that's analyzing all the weapon's base stats. It's a side-by-side -side comparison analysis. But what I really want you guys to take note of is the weapon's blue and black stats. By analyzing all these blue and black stats, we can clearly see that the blue stats only vary by a factor of five. And that's regardless of whether or not you're looking at range, reload speed, aim assistance, or recoil direction. And so in this sense, these weapons are almost identical in every way, shape, and form because the other ones are literally the exact same thing. So essentially what we have here is two weapons that are almost identical in all of their base stats. Because when you only have a margin of five that differs as the most from all these base stats, that pretty much means that they're the exact same thing. And so with the weapons range, stability, aim assistance, and recoil direction all being very, very high, this is exactly what we want to have because both of these weapons are then going to have decent range factors in which they're going to be viable in, as well as having some great shot rhythms. And how both of these weapons' shot rhythms can improve is through their intrinsic perks, and that's what we're going to discuss right now. As I said from before, the Last Hope has the intrinsic perk called Zen Moment. And what that states is that causing damage with the weapon is going to increase the weapon's stability, whereas with the Vision, it's only got Kill Clip. And although a Kill Clip is going to increase the weapon's lethality, it doesn't do anything for the weapon's shot rhythm. And so in this respect, the Last Hope is going to have a massive advantage here, because as soon as you happen to get even a little bit of damage, then that's when Zen Moment's going to proc, and that essentially means that you're going to hit more headshots, the recoil is going to be less, the overall stability is going to be more, and that really dictates that you're going to hit a lot more critical headshots, getting that optimal TTK much more often. In correlation with this is the other thing that I want to know about the Last Hope and the Vision, and that is that with the Last Hope, and because it's got Zen Moment, that recoil direction is going to be much more predictable, and you're not going to have to pull down as much on your right joystick, whereas with the Vision, this is not the case. Because the Vision doesn't have Zen Moment, its recoil is more consistent, but also means that it's going to be much more of a kick. And so in this respect, there's a much higher learning curve into mastering the shot rhythm of the Vision, whereas with the Last Hope, you don't have to worry about that, that's all because of the one perk called Zen Moment. In association with this, we also have two other sites that you guys can choose from for the Vision and the Last Hope, and those are both really going to affect the weapon shot rhythm even more so, and those two sites are the Short Spec SAS, along with the Farpoint SAS and the Vision, whereas the Last Hope has Control SAS, and once again, Farpoint SAS. With Short Spec SAS and the Vision, and with Control SAS on the Last Hope, each one of those two sites is going to give you the best stability option that you can possibly ask for for either one of these weapons. However, Farpoint SAS is going to greatly decrease the weapon's stability and handling speed, but the trade-off is that it's going to give you a significantly larger amount of range, and that within itself is very, very important as well. Throughout all the weapons that you can possibly find in Destiny 2, the ones in which I am looking for is the ones that have a marvelous symbiotic relationship for all the range engagements that I could possibly ask for. I'm looking for a primary and secondary weapon that's going to have the close, mid, and far range engagements covered, as well as those cross map engagements if need be. In the case of the Vision and the Last Hope, the reason why I want range on these things is because it increases the weapon's range engagements to be not just for close, but mid range engagements as well, and that's exactly what you need because then your primary weapon can then cover not just the mid range engagements, but also the far range engagements in which the Last Hope or the Vision clearly cannot cover. 
It's because of this logic and this reasoning that I want to have on that Farpoint SAS site for both the Vision and the Last Hope, which is exactly what you're seeing throughout this entire game footage, because I want them to be able to be applied to those mid-range engagements as well as the close-range engagements which they are easily going to obliterate Guardians in. With this, you guys now understand my thought process as to why I believe that having range is more vital than having on stability. And the best thing about the Vision or the Last Hope is that each one of these things has another perk to increase the weapon's range respectively, and those two perks are either called Accurized Rounds or Ricochet Rounds. With Accurized Rounds, it says that the weapon can fire longer distances, implying that the weapon's range is increased drastically. As for ricochet rounds, not only do bullets ricochet off of hard surfaces, but it increases the weapon's stability and slightly increases the weapon's range. But what you don't know about ricochet rounds is that it has a hidden range stat that's going to increase the weapon's overall range by a factor of up to 15 or 20 overall points. So as you guys can see, both these weapons have great perks here that are going to increase the weapon's range, but at the exact same time, you can also choose to have on a larger magazine size for the vision with the pen and magazine, or you can increase the weapon's stability even more so in the last hope with steady routes. If you were to ask me, I would highly recommend using accurized rounds and ricochet rounds for all the reasons that I previously stated, but if you want to try and change things up a bit, then maybe you want to use one of the two other options, as those things are entirely up to you. With all this information, you guys now know all the perks that you guys can possibly choose from for both the Vision and the Last Hope respectively. The very next thing that I want to mention about the Last Hope and the Vision is that the Last Hope is the only one of these two sidearms that can have the potential to have a maxed out stability build, whereas the Vision simply cannot have this be done. In association with this, you also have to take into account each one of these weapons' maximum range builds. And once again, the Last Hope is the better option here, and that's because even though both these weapons have that Farpoint SAS sight, Last Hope has Ricochet Rounds, and Ricochet Rounds is really going to increase the weapon's hidden range factor due to that hidden range benefit from the perk itself. So if I had to say which one of these two weapons was actually better in terms of range and stability, that option there is clearly the Last Hope. But what I will say about the Vision is that its lethality is 10 times more lethal, and that's solely because of Kill Clip and that 0.61 TDK that you can get when Kill Clip is active. The best part about Kill Clip is that it can last the weapon's entire magazine, and that's only if you're firing the weapon at a max rate of fire. So essentially what this implies is that you're going to have more than enough bullets to knock down just one Guardian, but two Guardians when Kill Clip is active. Taking that into account, I would say that the Vision is more beneficial for those 1v2 and 1v3 engagements, but on the other hand you got the Last Hope, which has better stability and better range, and that means that it's going to be better for those 1v1 engagements. If you were to ask me, I would say that the Vision has a much higher learning curve in comparison to that of the Last Hope, and that's because the Last Hope's perks allow the weapon to have a better overall shot rhythm. But if you can master the weapon's shot rhythm on the Vision, then that's clearly going to be more beneficial for multiple types of range engagements, including multiple scenario engagements like the 1v1s, 1v2s, and 1v3s that I mentioned from earlier. Having said all the weapons pros and cons for the Vision and the Last Hope, the Last Hope is the better option here. And that's because simply put, it's easier to use and it's better for those 1v1 engagements. However, the Vision has a much higher lethality in comparison to Last Hope and that's simply because of Kill Clip and that amazing TTK that it has associated with it. Even though the Vision's shot rhythm is much more difficult to grasp, and it has a higher ceiling in terms of the skill that's needed to use it fully, I would still say that the Vision is the one that I prefer the most. And that's because from my very, very aggressive playstyle, I find myself not just in 1v1s, but multiple 1v2 and possibly even multiple 1v3 engagements every single game, and for this logic and reasoning, the winner for me is the Vision. Having said all these things, I'm very, very intrigued to hear all your guys' thoughts on exactly what you think about The Last Hope and The Vision respectively. Do you think that The Last Hope is the winner or The Vision is the winner? And no matter which one of those two things that you guys decide, I want to hear about it down in the comment section below, as you can certainly guarantee that I'm definitely going to read all those comments and I can't wait to see exactly what you guys got to say. Lastly, go ahead and check out some of my other new videos, as you guys can see right there on the screen. If you happen to enjoy this one, then you're definitely going to enjoy those as well. That's pretty much all I've got for you right now, and so as always, DS Slayers, great gaming, until next time.